Hey, what's up, Street Talks? Eric from the Eric from Street Photography Blog. So, I'm gonna try to essay some thoughts about you on masculinity. So, I'm not a woman, so I can't speak about being a woman, but let me just th uh, share some thoughts on masculinity. So, one thing I really that just kind of uh, rubs me the wrong way is when people talk about toxic masculinity, and it's kind of a weird. It's, to me, the, the notion is actually just really weird. And, you know, people usually say, oh, you know, it's so bad that, you know, men are forced to be masculine and, you know, be strong and big and bad and blah, 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 blah. And then, and then it's like, they should not be like that. They should be like, da, 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 da. Now, let's just, let's just think this through. So first and foremost, if we think that, like, notions of toxic masculinity, like, you know, guys trying to overpower each other, blah, blah. Yo, that's been around forever. I mean, notions of like, even the stock market, right? In the stock, the, the notion of a big swinging dick, that notion's been around forever. I mean, even think about the kings and the soldiers and what is the cause of war? Essentially a bunch of dudes trying to like, flex their masculinity and try to overpower one another. Now, I think today's discourse of masculinity is interesting because Truth be told, I don't actually really hear a lot of men talking about masculinity, which is interesting. It's usually, um, I usually hear notions of uh, toxic masculinity coming from women. And you know, there's some guys who talk about it too, but uh, predominantly the notions are, are from women. Now, I say sociology, so there's this divide between nature and nurture. So what is your nature, your biological blueprint? And then there's nurture, it's like how does society raise you? And obviously, ultimately, notions of masculinity, it's all subjective. You know, the ancient Greeks had different notions of masculinity versus like, you know, Confucian scholars and Confucius and so forth. And obviously in modern America, we have different notions of masculinity. So, I can't speak for your, for you, but let me just try to speak for myself. So, my, my notion on what it means to be a man is uh, several things. Uh, to me, it's like, what do you decide not to be? So first and foremost, I strive to not be petty. I strive not to be spiteful. I strive not to to bully the weak. And also, I I am anti other people trying to put me down and trying to, you know, overpower me. So it's it's it's, it's very basic. And I mean, okay, let's talk, let's talk about some biological facts, right? I think men have a thousand times percent more testosterone than women, right? That's just a biological fact. Women and men both have testosterone, but it's kind of insane. Like men, we have like a thousand percent more testosterone than women. And you know, also women, uh, men have estrogen too, women do too. So there, there are certain biological differences. And I think the problem is nowadays, we actually don't think biological differences exist. Now to me, this is a little bit silly because like there are some hard genetic facts which are true. Like for example, me as an Asian American male or me as an Asian man, right? East Asian man, I'm Korean. I cannot, eat dairy without getting a really bad stomach ache. Whereas a lot of my Caucasian friends can. So, you know, it's, it's hilarious because I'm reading all these like muscle mags, right? Like, you know, the GoMed gallon of milk a day and just do a bunch of squats. Yo, I tried that and I had very bad stomach pains. So just realize there are some genetic differences between men and women. And what's up for debate is the degree of difference. Now, I would say my ideal of being a true man or whatever is kind of this new notion of stoicism so like i kind of like notions of a combination of stoicism philosophy being an artist um and uh, also powerlifting so to me it's it's super duper basic and so i kind of like notions that so like don't try to so if you're a man don't try to emasculate yourself however you define yourself is that you know obviously it's good to you know, be mindful of others, stuff like that. But like what I'm trying to encourage is like, don't try to just play politically correct for the sake of it to virtue flex in terms of like, you know, I'm so woke because I talk to people this way and I act that way, blah, blah. Just 
kind of listen to your own gut. Just like, yo, what feels what feels right to me, what doesn't feel right to me, and what does it mean to be masculine for me? So some other things. As a man, I think it's good to be physically stronger. It's good to be, you know, have more muscle mass. And so some basic thing, go to the deadlift, uh, go, to, go to the gym, do heavy deadlifts, heavy squats, heavy bench, and stuff like that. And increase your, your muscle mass. Ways to do that, eat a shitload of meat, lots of eggs, green, green, eat greens, like bitter herbs and stuff like that. And things to cut out, cut out sugar. That's, that's probably the big thing. Cut out sugar, simple carbs. I mean, I personally don't drink no more, but you know, you could drink, that's, that's fine. But as a man, having a lower body fat percentage and a higher muscle mass percentage is best. And just kind of think about like, you know, also for masculinity, I think the male physique is actually really, really quite beautiful. And just think about like, what kind of physique do you want to mirror? So for me, I'm going for like the Greek God physique. So I look at like Hercules. Yeah, Hercules is my uh, go-to guy. So like look, Google like Hercules Ferens, F-U-R-E-N-S. This is amazing statue. This like Hercules super duper like epic, right? And you know, the way I do that is during the day in order to keep my body fat percentage down, intermittent fasting, I don't eat breakfast or lunch, just have a massive dinner. It's more like kind of ketogenic diet, but not really ketogenic either because I eat way too much protein. So I just eat a lot of meat and Every week, I just try to increase my one rep max by five pounds. So currently, just for stats, 32 year old, uh, I'm 32 years old, Asian American, Korean American. Um, I think I weigh like 170, maybe like 173 pounds or something. I just, um, one, one rep max uh, deadlift yesterday was 450, which is a new PR. Last week, I squatted three plates and a 25, which I think is 365. And my bench is garbage, so let's not even talk about that. But anyways, I don't have good genetics. I look at my dad's skinny, <laughs> what they call skinny fat, skinny fat dude, right? And you know, some people might call me ectomorph, like my hands actually not too big and my wrists, no, you know, more on the petite side, but still like, yo, your genetics don't matter is that training triumphs over everything. Like I could deadlift way more than so many dudes in the gym who are way more big and taller than me with bigger hands and bigger wrists. So obviously there is some sort of genetic component, but realize I think ultimately it comes down to training, mental training, stoicism, physical training, powerlifting, and also like maybe like artistic training. So once again, to just keep this short, and this is just advice for myself too. One, train your stoic Zen zone calm. Don't be petty Two increase your one rem maxes and PRs. And three, um, yeah, just create epic art and share with other people. The only thing you can control is being courageous. You can't, being courageous and not being a coward. And however you define that, define it yourself. And uh, just ask yourself, what, is a real, what does it mean to be a real man? Thanks a lot for watching guys, peace out.